All right, so hello and welcome to the Inspired by Her podcast. My name is Kate Hancock and I'm a serial entrepreneur. I started my business with $20 and scale it to a multi-million dollar business. And so today I'm so excited to introduce to you my guest. First, this episode is about, have you ever wondered about what it takes to become an influencer? Well, that's exactly what we're going to learn today. So I have my amazing guest who I just started to become really good friends, Zoe and Kaloy. Can you tell us about Hi. your Thanks Yes. Thanks so much for having us, Kate. Yes. So I'm so excited. I know you guys are stuck in the Maguete right now. <laughs> That's Okay. So tell us, how did you get started? What's the story behind Zoe and Visayang Hilao? I mean, it dates back a year before Zoe, um, because Carson was traveling by himself for about a year and vlogging, so maybe he wants to start with that, and then I'll yeah. jump in a year later. <laughs> yeah. Well, where do I start when like, I started my channel? Yeah, so what was the story? I, bring me back to your first post. Was that a plan? <laughs> what is that like? Did you get traction? So... A few months before I started Visayang Hilao, I did a solo backpacking trip around Southeast Asia. So I didn't, I wasn't recording. I had a GoPro just for fun. Um, but I ended up in Shargao and that's when someone told me that I should start vlogging. And I had no idea what vlogging was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it gave me the idea. So I went home and like researched it and I was working at a call center at that time. So I did not want to do that anymore. And so I was like, all right, send it. And I bought a camera and then I flew back to the Philippines and I, Started making videos um, for a whole year before I met Zoe. So I had no idea what I was doing, but I was just recording like my adventures in the Philippines, kind of like just jumping off waterfalls. Pretty much what we're still recording now. Yeah. Nothing's really <laughs> changed, but now Zoe's here. Yeah, so I started off in marketing um, in Brisbane, Australia, and I liked my job, but kind of it was getting a bit stale for me. So my contract was coming to an end, so I figured I would spend three months in the Philippines. And it was, my plan was to rediscover like my roots um, and, you know, kind of find home. And then I met him, um, Carson, and decided, you know, I might stick it out for a bit longer than three months. So I started, you know, we, I joined the vlogs, we had so much fun. And then I noticed, you know, my channels, my Instagram to start with absolutely skyrocketed. So that happened very quickly. Um, and then I thought, you know, maybe I can make something out of this. So like just the other day we were looking, um, what was that website? Social, Social Blade or something Social like Blade. That? And you can like type in an influencer on Instagram and see all their statistics. Wow. And, like we ourselves. And just to see our growth was like crazy this time last year. So it's, it's interesting to see how far we've come in such a short time, but really it's just, the consistency and then being part of a market that's so involved in social media, which mm -hmm. the Philippines is. Yeah, I was looking at your your engagements is so amazing. Your every post. I think what makes you guys different too is you really spend the time to respond to your audience. I think yeah. that I've I've never seen like you guys really take time and respond to their uh, your your audience comment. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I think that's important. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it works to build a community. So, like, you're not just a like this idol that, that no one can kind of reach. Like, we're people, and so we have such a strong community where we're like. Go on, sort of thing. Okay. Like an influencer, like a YouTuber versus an artista. Yeah. Because, like, they people aren't shy to approach us on the streets and stuff because not like intimidating like an artista, right? Because mm -hmm. they feel like they have that connection already. Like we're just friends watching the vlogs, which is cool. I mean, we're not artistas, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I've seen people in action as they, you know, you guys were, you mentioned in one story, you guys were driving around with a motorcycle with a helmet and still people recognize you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Filipinos have single eyes. It's they can... crazy. They should all join like the FBI or something. <laughs> Okay, so um, 
what would be your advice for anyone who's just about to start their own channel? I think everyone is bored right now and <laughs> they wanted to break into that business. What would be your advice? Um, first thing I would just say is start like, just like I did. I didn't know what vlogging really was, but I just started like my first video didn't even have like background music or anything. It was just raw. Like I just started uploading and, and you learn as you go. So you can't, don't wait until you like, you know what you're doing to start because that's part of the process is you learn as you start posting a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely pick a niche that you really enjoy because if it's not something you enjoy, you're not going to last. Cause the thing with like YouTube or Instagram or any of that, it's a long, you're in for the long run. Like don't expect to become insta famous or becomes like a big profile in just like a few months. You have to like commit a few years. Yeah. So you got to enjoy what you're doing. Okay. So you mentioned it's about a year before you get traction. Is that what happened? Yeah. I mean, it, all, it all depends on luck and hard work and, there's a lot of factors. Yeah, like but it's definitely a marathon, not a sprint. Is what I'm mm -hmm, trying to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I think now's a really great time as well because people are so active on social media mm -hmm. because they're so bored. Yeah. So if you have something to contribute, to, you know, break that boredom cycle, then you know you're lucky. Like you're likely to get traction mm -hmm. right now. No, where did you learn? Are you like? Do you guys know already how to edit? videos or is there a website that you guys went to how to learn how to edit videos or things like that youtube university <laughs> youtube university okay <laughs> yeah so, no like you learn everything on youtube like they i kind of like knew the basics i don't know how like at the beginning but every little thing when you get caught up then you just go to youtube and search like how to. it definitely took me a lot longer to edit at the starting like seven plus hours for one video and now it's like wow. three hours. So you learn yeah. as you go. It takes forever at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. How did you deal with a Philippine um, signal? Oh it's, yeah. How did you get into that route? <laughs> and, like, I always told myself that the Philippines is like the best place to vlog, but the worst place because it's the worst uploading speed ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but after a year, my friend Brian from the Ahern family, he taught me a little trick. He told me that if you upload using your phone app, like the YouTube app on your phone, then it's like a million times faster. And now I upload in like 15 minutes versus it took me like nine hours before. Yeah. And then so. that doesn't mean like hotspotting from your phone to your computer. A lot of YouTubers are like, like yeah, we use our phone. It's like, no, you hotspot. It's still slow and it chews through your load. Yeah. So like actually upload on the YouTube app on your phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big <laughs> Which platform, yeah, so I have a question. So which platform work for you? Is it, is it Facebook or do you, uh, you, do you post it live or do you curate it in different platforms? So tell me, how do you guys work? Um, for Besides how YouTube videos, they're also like posted on Facebook about the next, like the day after. Mm -hmm. So like we post on YouTube first to kind of get the traction there. Um, and then the next day, or you know whatever we'll post on Facebook um, because there's still such a huge community on like how many followers do you have on Facebook? Uh, over a million. Yeah so there's a million people on Facebook who care about it um, but Facebook is still kind of figuring out monetization so they're new to the, the monetization game so it's a little bit there's some quirks that they need to figure out um, so you know it doesn't always make as much money as YouTube that's why the YouTube is the focus. Um, and then, so then we also cross promote on our Instagram because we have, you know, another audience on there. So we share in our stories, you know, swipe up to see the latest blog. Um, yeah, kind of having it across all platforms to get the audience. What is your day like? Okay, so you went shoot for how many hours a day do you shoot? I mean, it just depends like what we're doing. I mean, we, we, we're travel bloggers. <laughs> So yeah. we go out in the morning, um, we go to a waterfall or whatever we're doing, whatever adventure it is that day, and we just start filming until pretty much the sun goes down because it happens very quickly in the Philippines. Yeah. It's short Dark days. Like <laughs> is that what it is? Do you find, yeah. it, do you find it short? They are like Well, the sun just the goes sun. down early. Gotcha. The sun goes down at 5.30 versus yeah. in the States, it's dark at 9.30 p.m., you know, in, in summer. summer. So the yeah. days are longer in the States. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, do you guys plan your content for the year? Oh, do you, how do you do you schedule it? <laughs> no, I'm the worst planner in the world. I just go with the flow. I notice videos that I plan ahead do better. Like if I actually have a video in mind and I like execute mm -hmm. it, those videos get a lot more views. But we kind of then fill the the lulls between the planned videos with just our normal travel vlogs. Yeah. So the travel vlogs are consistency, and then it's the the viral videos that we planned that you know. Growth. Yeah, there is growth there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So. Bring me back to the first year. What was the best traction you've had when you started your YouTube, um, Carson? Was that we traveled together? No, when you just you when you were just starting by myself. Yes. Um. Well, my second video I ever made is still one of my top view videos. It was a Taga Asaka challenge where he danced with you know. So oh. I had <laughs> that video I did have in mind before I started vlogging because I wanted to just 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 do kind of fun videos. Uh -huh. And I thought of that one. Um, so that one, after a few, it, it was kind of slow, but then after a few months, it got traction because YouTube algorithms weird. They start sharing it a few months later, you know? Uh -huh. So that one was like my first 100,000 plus video when I first began. So I think that's how I started picking up subscribers and got like attention. Um, and then from there, it was just kind of a gradual, like, yeah, nothing like super quick growth until um zoe came along and we started to get some quick growth yeah then april was a huge month for us last yeah, year yeah when did i start i started backpacking february. in february mid-february with carson and then april a whole bunch of things kind of culminated and like we were just looking at our stats the other day and i my instagram grew like like 36,000 followers in a wow. week. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And it was organic. Like it, it was like, organic. It, yeah. Yeah. It within was, like two weeks, three weeks, she gained like 80,000 followers. <laughs> That's just amazing. So do you feel like, I guess it's working as a couple, right? Yes. Sure. Love teams definitely work in the Philippines. Like they, they love love. Um, <laughs> so for a long time, they weren't sure if we were dating. So it was kind of like the, mm. There's a story. Are they, are they not? So that's why people were invested in finding out if we were. And then once we were, we became the love team and now, you know, they're interested in seeing us kind of develop, so. Yeah, well, you guys, I just watched your last video, the uh, getting to who knows best. I was just laughing actually, listening to you guys. I won, I lost the first time. <laughs> So who did one at one month? Okay, how how about the Scrabble? Who's winning? Me every time. Every and she time. gets pissed off because I wreck her at Scrabble. Yeah, because he plays with technique. I just try to like put down the longest words that I know. She's like, I know these weird words you don't. That's like, but yeah, my I technique's don't. better. Yeah, I don't have technique. The score is lowest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we have you to thank for Scrabble. Our first time ever playing mm. was at um, the Thanos Paraiso in Nasa. Oh, wow. Okay, well, at least you get some yeah. berries. Thank you, but also if we break up, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be responsible. I don't, understand. I don't understand how she always wants to play because every time she gets mad that I, I crush her, she gets so frustrated. I come back. And since day one at Bintana, it's been the same. Yeah, and now I'm playing with his mom on Words with Friends, and I'm still losing. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't figured out that yet. <laughs> She just loves it. Wow, wow. Well, so um what's your plan? What what what's what's the, the feature of the love story of both of you? Are you or where which um is there any place that you guys are planning to visit after this quarantine? We were so close to going to Indonesia. Mm. So we we're supposed to be going at the end of April. Yes, we were definitely going. We we had like really strong plans to go definitely in May at the beginning of May for a Red Bull event. And then we thought we'd leave at the end of April because it's Carson's birthday. So we're like, let's go to Indonesia and have your birthday there. And then I think we did what a lot of um, millennials did at the beginning of the coronavirus thing. Mm -hmm. um, we saw cheap flights <laughs> and we're like, maybe we should. <laughs> so cheap. <laughs> like so cheap because um, I saw flights from Maldives for like $200 and I was like, really? round trip. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is 
this is it. We have to go to the Maldives. And then realized that's actually not our thing. Um, <laughs> so we looked at flights to um, Java. Wow. So we we'll spend some time in East Java and then go to Bali for the Red Bull event. But that has been way pushed back. So after all the quarantine, all that, and it's safe to travel again, um, hopefully in Indonesia. Indonesia, okay. So, so, yeah. yeah, okay. And so that's just like Bali, we want to do East Java. Uh-huh. So jo- Zoe, I love how you transition from an influencers and working with a brand. I saw some of your commercial. So how did you, what made you decide to do that? So tell me that story. my signals did i get broke up oops sorry it's just coming out yeah you're glitching a little bit yeah i think it's my signal yeah so i love how you transitioned from influencers and working to big brands how did you get into that is that something you plan or it just happened so you mean like how did i get into like the commercial Yes, the commercial side. Oh, the commercial side. Yeah. Um, that was all part of our April story. So in April, I had a viral photo shoot. Um, it was my first ever photo shoot. I've never modeled, um, not even like as a kid or anything. And I met this, um, a swimsuit designer in Romblon in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. And um, she's like, like she makes her own swimsuits at home and wanted to start a brand. So I met her at um, a fiesta and then she's like, Hey, like, do you want to model for me tomorrow morning? I was going to do it myself, but like, can you do it? So I was like, sure. Why not? Like you're really nice. And you're going to give me a swimsuit. So, okay. <laughs> and then um, that photo shoot, it took a little while, like almost a month for it to really pick up on Facebook. And out of nowhere pretty much it just started getting shared and shared and it had like almost 100k shares that's why my instagram started growing so much and there was nothing like raunchy about it i was really i was just in a swimsuit Mm -hmm. um but i became known as yellow bikini girl oh wow Um, yeah and then because of that going so viral and it was all over the philippines like A lot of people didn't know me from Bisayan Hilao. They knew me from Yellow Bikini Girl. And then that's how my agency picked me up because they search on social media. Um, so they focus only on Filipino talent mm-hmm. um, or at least Eurasian beauties. So they found me through my social media. Um, and then we had discussions about what it meant to join a modeling agency. Um, and then before I knew it, I was signed and I had my first commercial before I actually signed my contract. It was with Air Asia. Um, and it was pretty surreal. Like I hadn't even really signed with the agency yet. And I was being flown to Macau for like an overseas shoot. I was like, this is crazy. Um, so yeah, I'm really lucky being in the Philippines that social media is so valued here because that's how I was found. Um, and now that's how I continue to get big brand deals for commercials. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so um, so being a couple, I mean, do is there any, like, I have to share a story. When Dan and I go to an event and they always assume that it was him who started, is there sometimes your friction, how you get your feelings hurt? Because you guys are both, is that, or you guys are in the same, like, maybe one will get attention than the other. Is that it ever happen or no? Um, sometimes one of us will get approached for a brand deal and the other won't, mm-hmm. even though we have very similar audiences, same amount of like, um, like followers. Um, so we usually then try to like involve the other person. So if someone reaches out to me, unless it's like very niche to you know females, I'm not going to be like, hey, my boyfriend would really like to be involved in this Maybelline campaign. <laughs> like, that's not going to work. But if it's something that, like, he can be involved in, then I'll pitch him um, as, like, a package. So, you know, buy one, get one free. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, did you guys ever shoot a commercial with both of you? Did you guys ever work with a brand? Um, not in a commercial. We almost... 
um, got picked for a tourism thing in the Philippines um, through my agency. They needed a Australian backpacker that could speak Visaya, and he's not Australian, but <laughs> could look. <laughs> <He's a little. laughs> yeah, um, and speaks Visaya, and they he almost got it, but they wanted him to cut his hair. Yeah, it wasn't so trying to cut my hair. That's like how long does it take you to get that long? I thought they wanted a backpacker, not like a yeah, like a clean shaven guy. But no. <laughs> so yeah, we didn't end up getting that one because yeah, he needed short hair, but that's okay. So no, to this day we haven't done a commercials together, um, but we've done some collabs together, like single logs, and that was cool. Yeah, we were on Gmail. Oh yeah, uh, we've been on a couple TV shows. Um, Which one? We were on Jessica Soho. Okay. Um, and also GMA, yeah, I wonder. So that was that was also in April. So that was another part of the April explosion. Hmm. It seems like April is your lucky month. It is. Yeah, hopefully this year repeats history repeats itself. But yeah. Doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't know how it's gonna be in quarantine, you know, going viral again, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um I have a question of it. I know I've asked you this before, Carson. I mean, your Cebuano is way deeper than mine or Zoe or anyone. So it's like, it's so impressive or like, we can't beat you, right? How did you get into that deep, deep Bisaya? No, that's true. But <laughs> <laughs> what was your, did you ask me questions? Did you <laughs> Sorry, <switch> that? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I think my my Wi-Fi here is so bad. So how did you learn that really deep Cebuano words? Like no one could ever compete with you. Your Cebuano is so deep. Um. So I learned I learned my Cebuano serving as a missionary for the LDS Church. Um. So part of our everyday studies was like an hour of language study. And so that means like either reading like the Bible or scriptures in Cebuano and those are already like super deep words, right? Like even people I thought they didn't understand the Bible words because they're so deep. Um, even the dictionary, those are like really deep words. So sometimes it's a disadvantage because like the locals don't even understand what the words mean, even though that's like the pure Cebuano, you know, because mm -hmm. Cebuano is kind of like developed over time or evolved. Mm -hmm. like, even the English, it's kind of a mix of English sometimes. Yeah. So I guess that's where like deep words come from, just like through the studies and trying to memorize words and having no idea, you know, it's like you're just reading, or, yeah. I don't know. You just, no, but you just can. Deep words and then speaking with the locals, I mean, that's how like you really learn a language is like immersing in, in the culture and with the people. So I wrote down words every day, what people are speaking. So I guess just words I pick up, some of them are deep. Wow. <laughs> Wow, that's really impressive. Because, like, I love how you can just spit. I think that makes you so special because you're a blonde as hell and your Cebuana is yeah. deep. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> He's definitely got a niche there. Yeah. 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 Do you think that's, I'm sure that's, that's, you know, what sets you apart and it's a big part of why you have some loyal following in, in Mindanao and Visayas. Yeah, if you if you look at our following, it's so saturated in Cebuano speaking, like our Tagalog followers, there's not too many. Mm -hmm. um, like our fan base or following base is very Cebuano. Yeah. So definitely the Cebuanos connect more. Even though Tagalogs can read our subtitles, they don't they're probably not connecting with us because yeah, they're not getting the sense needed. of humor and like the language, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah it's definitely that's definitely the the thing that set me apart, even my first year before Zoe, like before the love team, like it was, I was the white guy speaking Cebuano, you know? So that's why even my first year, I, I grew to a hundred K in 10 months. And I don't think I would have been able to do that if I just spoke English. So it definitely helped me out. That's, that's very true. So what is your highest views ever? Was, is that still 9 million or what's the recent? Um, on Facebook, it's, it's easier to get views on Facebook because you can share, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that one's over 11 million on wow. the taxi scams in Manila. So um, I kind of just show how many taxis drivers yeah. are offered and dishonest. And unfortunately, majority of them were, uh, or maybe it was half. 
Um, no, was, we got three on this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it definitely wasn't half. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah most, most of them were dishonest. But that one is my most viral on Facebook. On YouTube, the highest one, I think, was like around three, over three million views on Manok Nupula. I think that's <laughs> <laughs> when we sing Manok Nupula. Oh, my Okay. And these are planned videos as well. Yeah, see, so you can tell. We put thought into them. And like, they're a lot harder to execute because it's not just us jumping off waterfalls and doing what we do every day. Mm -hmm. Like, we have to give up, you know, an entire day to like facilitate. Ride taxis. Song. Yeah, ride taxis back and forth from all of Asia to the casinos. Um, <laughs> or, you know, walk around a whole singing a song. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> about chickens <laughs> okay so um what is okay so for anyone who's just about to plan on starting their own right what is what is the range startup cost how much do you have to spend for a camera what would you advise and what to ex what for them to expect um well my first camera was a sony a6300 um it's a good camera and it's great for vlogging because it's very light. That was around seven hundred dollars, but I think even that isn't necessary. Um, her iPhone Eleven is great. Yeah, if you've got an iPhone, even the ten is fine. I yeah. just had a broken camera on my ten. That's the only reason I upgraded. Um, so yeah, an iPhone from about ten up is great. Yeah, we have we have friends in Bohol and all they film is their using their iPhones and yeah. they have a ton of subscribers, like over three hundred. Mm -hmm thousand subscribers so yeah. yeah they just film on their phone I don't think you need a really nice camera it depends what you're doing if you're trying to make cinematics and like invest in a nice camera and then just editing software as well so I mean yeah. you can get free. I know some people who do like iMovie yeah iMovie is, okay yeah. Or even GoPro has an editing software mm -hmm. but yeah I think some bloggers like becoming Filipino I think he mainly uses his GoPro I think and but, then there's people who also edit on their phones, phones. Yeah, you can do it cheap. Like, it's no excuse that you have to, like, save up to buy a nice camera. Yeah, just start. Just start doing it. And then as you gain traction, as you grow, then you can start investing in new equipment. Yeah, upgrade uh, as you go. Like, now we're using, you know, better equipment. But, I mean, we've seen a lot of, you know, benefits in our photography. But, mm -hmm. and, like, the videos have remained mostly the same. Yeah. So who's the most creative of both of you? Who's the most creative? It's and a I think my signal. Um, sees things that I don't but to write. So I guess I have that and like the captions for our like Instagram and whatever, like for the most part, I She's, do them. Like she I, has all the words. I don't have any words. And like, I like to express myself that way where I'm not one to really visually express. So all the photos I post, he takes them. <laughs> yeah. So I guess, I mean, visually he's more creative. I just have the words in here and I know how to express, express myself that way. That's one. So you guys really are a great team. No doubt. <laughs> <We got> no doubt. <laughs>